and welcome to my channel. It is Dr. Shawnee Collins Woods and today I'm here to just sort of talk a little bit and reflect on the last 30 days of my life. Today is March the 25th, Saturday, March 25th and it is about 320, probably 325 and one month ago to almost the hour, my beloved father Charles Wilson Collins um, transitioned and went to be with the Lord and if you've been following this channel, um, and I don't share much about it, but I'm going to start sharing. It's always been my intent, but, you know, being a caregiver and dealing with a lot of um, uh, aging parents. Um, sometimes, you know, you keep things private to respect privacy, dignity, and just, you know, everything is not for public consumption. But I will share uh, more about my caregiving experience either on this channel or a channel I created a while back, but I just haven't um, shared it publicly. But if you are new to my channel, I thank you for, for joining me today and for watching this video. I'm Shawnee Collins Woods, um, an assistant professor of social work. And on this channel, I talk about all things related to self-care, self-compassion, healthy boundaries, and faith and spirituality. So thank you. Please subscribe, hit that notifications bell. And um, I hope you uh, feel welcome um, to this channel. But I just wanted to give an update, and this is in a two-part update, just for people to kind of know I'm okay. But also, it's for me to kind of really track how I feel in the moment. And so when I look back at these videos, if God allows me to live that long, you know, 40 years from now, I can, you know, really see how I was and how I felt about things. And so today, again, is 30 days almost to the hour since my father, since Timothy, who was with my father when he passed, my husband Timothy, since he called me on the phone and said, Shani, you know, Mr. Collins has passed and, and you know, those emotions came in. And how I'm feeling today is, um, you know, I feel okay. I'm at peace with it. But of course, you know, that's my daddy. I miss him. You know, I love him. I miss kissing on him and touching him and rubbing his little bald head, making him feel comfortable. Um, I've been a caregiver for three years to both my parents, and um, that's been a lot of responsibility in, in addition to being a working woman and a wife. And so a lot of times um, people don't talk about the things that are really going on in the behind the scenes of their lives. You don't even really know who's a caregiver. And um, so don't even take for granted what, what people have going on in their lives because you really don't know what people have going on. And there are many people like me who are millennial caregivers or those in the sandwich generation. And in this experience, an experience that um, that many people go through, um, I'm not unique at all. I grew up in Mississippi and saw my mom provide care for her mother for many, many years and her father both my grandparents um, and uh, were, you know, around all the time um, until they passed. And um, my mother was a primary caregiver to her mother um, for many, many years. And my sister and I would jump in and help in any kind of way that we could. And also to her um, father, uh, who she's named after. My grandfather's name is Cassie. My mom's name is Cassie. Um, and I would also see my paternal grandmother, Beatrice. She would come to our house sometimes and you no, know, maybe for a few weeks. And so caregiving is not an experience that is um, foreign to to my family or to other people. And so um, when you are a caregiver and you're dealing with individuals who have chronic health issues or who, uh, for the most part, have issues that are not curable. In my dad's case, he had kidney disease. And I can make another video about kidney disease and how you get that and where it comes from. But just throughout the years, you know, my dad's health was really, really good. Started having some strokes. Um, I'll probably say the first one was in what 2006, and he had kind of three, but over kind of spaced out over a period I would say about 10 years, and the last one was in 2015, and that one sort of um, made him um, debilitated in the sense that he wasn't paralyzed, but he was no longer able to kind of like uh, be independent. So he could push himself around in a wheelchair and go around and, you know, eat and do everything. But, you know, that stroke did have an impact on 
um, a lot of his physical capabilities. Whereas before many years, my dad is so strong and, you know, just doing everything on top of the roof, doing construction, just doing everything, driving all across the world, the country, you know. And so when you start to get sick, it changes, um, you know, your physical, uh, you physically, but also cognitively, especially when you start talking about strokes, but also, you know, um, you know, it just, it just changes you and it changes the family dynamics a little bit. And so my mom had been his caregiver, um, for, for many years and she became sick at some point. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, but, um, to make a long story short, my dad, um, had to come and move in with me, um, right around when the pandemic started. And I always say this, like, um, people say that pandemic started, you know, around about 2020, end of 2019, 2020, for me, it was kind of like the end of 2019. That was like our, when our pandemic started for this family, I was like, oh Lord, thank you Jesus for, for getting us through all these years. So when I think about the last several years, I can't say, but give God the a hallelujah praise. It's so true because God has kept me and sustained me and allowed me to be able to provide care, direct day-to-day -day boots on the ground, care for uh, aging parents not one but two and so um it brings me to the fact that my dad passed away and, and and what does that look like for me what did that experience look like for us we knew that it was coming but um you know hospitalizations sometimes they go this way sometimes they don't but toward the end of january my father started to get a little sick he got pneumonia, which was un not uncommon for him because my father smoked cigarettes for many years. So over the years, he developed uh, emphysema or COPD, which I hope to make another video about. COPD. And so with COPD, you it puts you at a high risk of developing pneumonia. You start having breathing issues, and which are not good, especially because we are in a pandemic. But typically, it will be a hospitalization. Dad would come home probably like after a week, being at Vanderbilt or so. And, you know, we just move forward for nine months and it's not, you know, another hospitalization because I have care and support in terms of, you know, home health and things of that nature. But this one was kind of a little bit different. He was able to come home, but he had to go back in. So the last three weeks of his life were sort of in and out of the hospital. Um, and so that's a sign like that your body is, is sort of declining when a person starts to be in and out of the hospital and but my dad was present you know everything you know was just you know getting a little bit weaker and um i won't go into the specific details but i was able to say goodbye to my father my sister was able to come down from durham north carolina to say goodbye to my dad my mom was able to see my dad to love on him to say goodbye timothy was able to be with my father the hours before he died the exact moment that he died and so I can't be anything but grateful. Am I sad and hurt? Yes. You know, some days I feel devastated. And then some days, you know, I can look up and like today is so shiny and bright outside. And I can say, Daddy, I feel you and I know that's you. It's just like missing the little things like his smell or, you know, even hearing him call for. Or it's just my level of attentiveness to being like, okay, I got to go check on my dad and make sure he's okay, so forth and so on. So it's things like that. And as I was kind of going through this process and reading up on things, I saw this thing on Pinterest that read, it said like, grief is like a ball, okay? And it's a ball that sort of stays with you. So can you imagine a big bouncy ball? The ball never really goes away. It just gets a little bit smaller, but it's always there. And that's because we love our relatives. We care for them. And you know, we're going to miss them. And so the thing that I feel so grateful about is having a husband who is a person of deep faith. Timothy had been with his mother, Miss Maxina, my mother-in-law. I never met my mother-in-law, Miss Maxina Edwards, um, round the clock for the most part when she transitioned some years ago, way before I met Timothy. And so um, I just tell him, I said, you know, Tim, God just has a special anointing on your life to be able to sit not only with my dad when he passed, to be in a room with him, but also to have done that for your mom and to have been able to see her you know in the state that she was in my father wasn't on any type of mechanical devices or intubation he was just just like you see me here just like his normal self and he just looked like his normal self <laughs> and that was one of the things that was so hard for us i was like asking i was like are y'all sure because my daddy looks good he's healthy he's looking at me i'm looking at him he's looking at me i'm like what we like you know what's going on but 
the, the doctor's new in and your body is giving these signs that, you know, of decline, you know, but, um, I tell my husband, I say, you know, God has a special anointing for you. Um, and he is a person who is studying to become a minister, but, um, you know, God has a special anointing on your life because there's no way that I could be, could have been in the room with my father because it would be, it just would have been too much, um, for me. And even though I wanted to, it just was going to be too, too much given that been day-to-day caregiving it's just it's too much and then there's just no way I could have been I just wouldn't have been able to do it and God knew that God knows so much like he knows what we can take he knows when our threshold has been met and I'm so grateful to God for that and for giving me such a wonderful husband to have been able to support me through all of this because it's not just a me thing it's my husband being supportive, my sister being as supportive as she can, she's away. And, you know, that's hard for her, too, because, you know, it's her parents that are here in Tennessee, and she's, you know, miles away, and it's hard to get back, and you want to help, but you just, you know, really, you can't do everything that you want to do. And um, so that's another thing about caregiving. It doesn't really matter about birth order. Sometimes it falls on who it falls on. My sister is older than I am, but the, a lot of the responsibility for doing this fell on me. But she's been a tremendous help in coming in and helping whenever she could. So dad died. You know, we had a beautiful ceremony um, at Mount Zion Baptist Church um, in Antioch, Tennessee on March the 6th, Monday, March the 6th. I really wanted it to be on that Friday. <laughs> and my aunt Dot made me laugh. She was like, I was just praying. You know, I was hoping that you wouldn't have it so fast. And for me, in my mind, I was like, no, you know, get my dad in the ground. Let's hit this. You know, we have what everything is in place. Let's move forward with this. I'm not going to be holding my daddy out. And this, his skin color is not going to be changing. And you know, you know what I'm talking about, black folks. Okay. And, and, I, and I understand everybody's not able to bear their relative in a um, kind of timely manner. And that's very unfortunate, which is going to be what I'm talking about in my second video about life insurance. But um, we had it on March the 6th in Antioch. And it was just such a beautiful day. It looked so good. New Generation Funeral Home. In Antioch, Tennessee, did a tremendous job with my father. And he, like I said, he wasn't, you know, on intubation or anything like that. So he just looked like himself. But sometimes I've been to a lot of funerals, and sometimes that person does not even look like the same person. I know death changes you a little bit, but my dad literally looked just like he was sleeping, like literally sleep. And, you know, it was a beautiful ceremony. Timothy's words were beautiful. Kanika's words were beautiful. The choir, the few people who were there, all of the ministers and associates who helped us um, with the program, who served, who were so kind to serve from Mount Zion, were, they were there. Family showed up. The right people were at my dad's funeral. If people didn't show up, I'm so grateful, <laughs> you know, for those who had the desire to come. But I'm grateful that a few people, you know, actually didn't show up because, you know, this was a peaceful home going for my father. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, what else? We buried him at Woodlawn, um, in Nashville, um, Tennessee, and it was a very nice burial. I wasn't able to get the military honors. My father was in the Air Force, and I was, um, trying to get the military honors, but I, I wasn't able to, um, do so. My phone kind of had paused like it was about to stop. I wasn't able to do so. His, um, military form didn't come in until actually the day of his funeral, and I was like, man, look at this, but that's okay. Um, and, and what else? I mean, new generation just really took care of us. I remember going to pick out the casket and I was just like crying and, and stuff. I just kind of was having, you know, some emotions, you know, and Miss Natasha, Miss Tanya, they were so kind to us. And um, Elder Katina Parrish from Mount Zion did my dad's eulogy. She even came to sit with me and Timothy and mom as we were, you know, kind of making some of the arrangements. And I'll forever appreciate that. Um, so everything was just nice. It was a beautiful weekend, a sunny weekend, and I can't say enough. There were some things that probably didn't go as I had hoped, but I prayed about those things. And then just like with my wedding, there was something that didn't go right that I had hoped. And I was just like mad about it for two years, <laughs> but I've just prayed about it and lifted up to God. Cause what can you do when you are the bereaved? There's when you're the person bereaved or when you are the bride, you can't be around here managing everything. Some stuff you, you put it in other people's hands and it doesn't go the way you want it to go. But you find that after the fact. So I did have one experience like that. But other than that, there's nothing else I could do about it. Just to put it in God's hands and just let it go. 
um but um the oh the beautiful memorial photo tribute montage i had made for my dad it was so beautiful and nice and <laughs> tim was over there crying and everybody Kanika was like i can't look at it i can't look at it <laughs> So those things were funny, but my dad looked beautiful and, um, you know, I'm just going to miss my sweet daddy. And, and other than that, um, you know, I know dad's in a better place. And I was looking at some videos this morning cause I was like, okay, this is the day. It's approximately 30 days since dad has passed. I was looking at some videos this morning and he was telling me that he loved me. And I was like, daddy, I love you. And so those things warm my heart. But also as I was looking at those, you know, I could see the sickness, like, you know, and then that kind of makes you, brings you back to reality. Like, yeah, you want your parent here or your loved one here, but they're a little sick. So God is giving them rest. And, um, I, it's so funny over the summer, like maybe a summer ago, I can't remember the last time Kanika was down here, we were watching TD Jakes because we watched Bishop Jakes and he, a sermon came on and it's so ironic that we were both in the room at the same time with our parents. And, um, it was about T.D. Jakes talking about his mother when she was passing or dying and that whole process. And if you follow Bishop Jake, he talked a lot about his dad because his dad died of kidney disease, kind of like my dad. And his mom died, I think, of dementia, but he was kind of caregiving. And he was just saying, you know, it gets to a point where the family member becomes selfish for wanting that person to be here. And that always just stuck with us, like in our mind. And we would talk about it over the past year. And so when we were going through this process and, you know, you want your father here, you want your parent or whoever to be with you. But it, that sermon always come back, comes back to my mind. Like, you know, it begins to be selfish when you want a person to, to be here and they are sick. My dad wasn't suffering, but, you know, sickness, kidney disease, you know, that's, that doesn't get better. It's like dementia. It, it's not going to change. Okay. And so that, that sermon has really brought comfort to me. And then my husband over the past few years, again, I keep going back to Tim. Tim's a deeply spiritual person. And having walked through it with his own mom, he's always been saying, Shani, read scriptures on heaven. And he was telling me this way back in 2019, like, no, 2017, when my Aunt Constance, you no, know, my Aunt Constance passed, I think in 20, at the beginning of 2019. And she was like a second mom to us. She and my mom were very close and my Aunt Constance died. And we were like, whoa, she just had a heart attack. And I would be coming home like crying because it was just so like devastating. I was like, dang, my Aunt Constance helped me get my PhD financially. She was there at every single thing. I just, that's like my auntie. She didn't have any children. And she was, we were always around her because she lived so close to us. And so when she died, it was very difficult for my sister and I. And I think it was difficult for my other cousins and relatives too, but we just kind of having grown up with her and being so close to her and kind of her and my grandmother and being around them all the time, it was very difficult for us and it still is difficult. Um, and so Tim would just say, she's in a better place. Shani reads scriptures on heaven. So he's been telling me that for years and years and stuff. And I'm like, okay. And really when the week that my dad had passed a few days, you know, when he, he had passed, I started to sit there and you know, get on the internet and start reading those scriptures on heaven and to see what other ministers had to say about heaven. And when my dad left this earth, his body is just asleep, but he instantly went to paradise with the Lord. And so that brings me comfort. And yeah, you know, I still kind of wrestle with that, you know, wanting him to be here with me. But my dad is with his father. And when I get a little anxiety about it, I feel a little sad. I have to go back and rely on my faith and say, you know what? Your dad is with his dad. He is in heaven and he is well <laughs> and he ain't trying to come back down here. And so that's where it's very aspirational um, for where, you know, where dad is. That's what we as believers who believe those who believe in Jesus Christ, you know, um, though the body is asleep, you know, we when the body is asleep, we are with the Lord. And so it's a great thing that my father is with back with his heavenly father and just enjoying you know, his soul is, is just, it's just beautiful and it's in paradise. And so we look to, to that as believers, we're still here dealing with the labor and the toil and the strain and the difficulties. We're going to have to be dealing with that until God calls us home, but dad no longer has to deal with that. So that brings me comfort. Also, my mother's doing really well. And I just think when you get to your seventies, my mother is uh, 76. Um, you just, you just look at death differently, you know, and she's always been a very, very strong woman. She's so strong. Um, you know, um, and, and I've seen her handle several deaths before her mother's, her father's, 
my cousin Kurtz. We were right there kind of like when everything was happening with him um, and had to see his um, to see him and lie there um, in the morgue at the hospital. And, you know, my mother's just, I've seen her handle some things in a very, very strong way. And so it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, but she's just a woman of deep faith. And I've just been looking at her like, Whoo. and she always like, girl, I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> she already like, I'm gonna pray for you, Shani. But I'm gonna conclude with this video um, just by saying, I'm well, I cry, I have my moments. I'm gonna feel however I feel. Um, and that's just, this is what it is. I'm not going to try to be anything other than myself in this process. Someone was saying, I know you're trying to be strong. You know, you're, somebody had a relative and we were, my sister and I were like, this person, what is this about? You don't even know what you're talking about. No one's trying to be anything, but, and I had to tell my husband about, um, a few days when I was experienced, I said, you know, Tim, I'm just, I'm kind of at peace. I said, should I be doing something different? Should I be crying at this moment? And he told me something that was so prolific. He said, Shawnee, don't discredit the peace God is giving you in the moment. And I said, boom, that's what it is. So when stuff happens, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt us. And if we're not crying in that moment, it doesn't mean you don't feel like it. It just may be in that moment, God has just given you peace. And the word of God says that God will give us peace that surpasses all understanding. So there have been moments of being distraught and there have been moments of peace. And so I'm seeking after peace and searching after peace because I know that my father is in a um, better place. This is not going to, you know, uh, take us out of here. <laughs> you know, we this too is just a part of the cycle of life. And one day somebody's going to be um, uh, burying me. Okay, and um, I'm going to conclude by saying this is my second wrap up. When we were younger, my mom used to always take us on Saturdays to like different people houses to go to funerals and things of that nature. And there would be always, you know, some chicken because black folk, we're going to bring the chicken to the house. We'd be bringing chicken and Sprite and we would just sit with those families. And I remember being young and asking my mother, Mama, why do we, why are we, you know, what are we doing? Because I didn't really understand. I knew someone had died, but I didn't understand the part of comforting the bereaved and my mother said shani you need to go with me because one day you're gonna have to plan my funeral and so that brought everything to perspective to me at that very early, young age we are all dying every day we are dying no tomorrow is not promised my dad lived 74 years that's a beautiful life my grandmother osborne lived i think 90 i think my grandma was like 97 i can't really remember i think she was 97 my paternal grandmother my grandma b grandma collins was 88 oh you know my my mom's father died i think at 69 we don't know when we're gonna leave this earth but one thing we can do is believe and trust in our savior put our hope and faith in jesus christ that's who I believe in. And another thing we can do is try to prepare, okay? That's going to lead me to my next video about life insurance and how this obituary, how all this stuff was planned and what I had to do and what I want to encourage you to do. Start putting your, getting your house in order. Get your life right with Christ if it is not right. Because when my dad died, his soul instantly went to heaven. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, if we die today in this moment, where would our souls go? The, the material stuff, we ain't taking it with us. But where's your soul going to go when you die? And so I'm at peace because I know where my father's soul is. I know where my soul is going. I know where my mom's soul. We're saved. We believe in Jesus Christ. We profess his name since for a long time. And um, so those are things that are truly important in this earth. And death will sober you up really quickly. So if you're here and you need to accept Jesus Christ, consider giving God your heart believe in him accept in him call on his name and you will be saved and so thank you for watching this video um I thank God for my dad's beautiful life and I thank God for the gift of being able to be his caregiver for the last few years of his life but I thank God that he was a gift to me in being a wonderful and a tremendous father my mother is too she's such a gift to me I'll make a video about her later but I've told them everything I needed to say and so make sure you get out there and tell your family what you need to say and clear up any loose ends and relationships. Okay, that's my fifth wrap up. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video and um, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And I hope this video has brought you some comfort if you're thinking about your life and your loved ones, so forth and so on. Take care and until the next time, be blessed.